Hello there friends, this is Dota News and we are here to create the best Dota News channel ever. Today we are going to try a new format for us, so we really need your support. Don't forget to comment and like the video, it helps us to understand what direction to go in and how much you like our work. In today's episode we cover the story of Miracle and how he became the best player in the world, why he left the pro scene and how he came back and what to expect from him now. Without further ado, let's get straight to it. Amer Al Barkavi was born on June 20th, 1997, in Jordan. Miracle's path in esports, as it often happens, is connected with his elder brother. From the age of five or six, Amer asked his mom for money to go with his brother to a computer club, where he, together with his brother, played Dota, and the elder one taught him the basics of the game. Miracle began his training in the first Dota, I mean, in Warcraft and the custom map. Dota All-Stars. But with the release of Dota 2 he immediately moved to the new game and showed a phenomenal result, calibrating at 5000 MMR. Miracle really liked the competitive component of the game and its variety. The young boy could play his favorite game all day long and was already one of the best players in the ladder. And everyone around him admired the way Miracle played. If at the time of 2015 to compare with other players, Miracle had 9000 MMR while his closest opponents had only like five or six. And obviously, such a talented player could not be overlooked. In 2015, Miracle joined the Balkan Bears mix, his first more or less serious team. And it wasn't just a mix of random players, you might know Weeha and Yabzor among them. And you know, they will meet in future even after the Balkan Bears. But Miracle played with this mix only for four months and didn't achieve anything. After that, he just left the team and decided to focus on his personal skill and developing it. Amer was very afraid that he would not be able to play at a professional level and played Dota day and night. Already in July 2015 he became the top two player in the ladder behind only Weeha. And you know, obviously such a talented and outstanding player couldn't be without a team for long. So some Danish dude decided to ask him to play together. And that dude was Big Daddy, also known as No Tail. At the moment he played in Monkey Business, which would later turn into the very first OG roster. By the way, if you want me to do the full history of OG in a video, just write about it in the comments below. So, in addition to No Tail and Miracle, Fly, Crit and Moonminder also played in the team. And even though it was Miracle's first ever serious team, he showed an unreal level of play, most notable were his Invoker and Shadow Fiend. His skill on these two was just unreachable, fantastic, miraculous. Soon made to live here in Frankfurt. A must-deserve title, the dream title, and they thank their audience. The crowd here have been behind them the whole way. OG, they are the champions. Ladies and gentlemen, your Dota 2 champions, Team OG! The very first OG roster won the majors in Frankfurt and Manila. Also, during the season, this team took the 7th and 8th place at Shanghai Major, won two Dream Leagues and ESL won Frankfurt. At this point, Miracle became the first 9k MMR winner. But then came the International 2016 and OG were coming here as the favorites of the tournament. And they finished the group stage in the first place without any problems and without any losses. But in the playoffs, some something went wrong. The team couldn't even win one single match. After such a failure, Miracle decided to leave for a more promising team. And already in September 2016, he was signed by Team Liquid for the role of Carry. In this team, Miracle revealed himself to the full. His highlights are still unforgettable. It's hard to perceive how a person could produce such performances time after time. I honestly can watch it on repeat 24-7, 365. For example, he has Shadowfiend low HP escape, 
Miracle's able to blink out. Oh, he missed because of the evasion. He oh. actually missed Miracle with that auto attack. But Miracle might actually get caught anyway. The right click slip's gonna get him. Pops the mantle though, Miracle. Can oh, he he's trying to dodge him out with the illusion. Oh, bait. surely he can't. Oh, wait. Oh, my oh. God. The illusion no. bait. No. <laughs> His TP's down. Oh. Oh. And he's gonna get the courier. Oh, what? What is happening? <laughs> Another relocating in to try to no. heal him up. He doesn't have boots, boots to travel up, but GH. I can't heal quite him. believe it. Or the only solo rampage in the history of Dota. Pudge is a hero, fundamentally just relies on mass murder over and over again. He can't afford to just stand and be inactive. Er early on, early on in the game, Pudge is really early and mid game. Pudge is really all about rotations, getting these pickoffs, getting good hooks to land. Later on, however, he still needs good hooks to land, but he doesn't necessarily have to be killing people a lot. He could be using those hooks defensively too. And uh, speaking of the punch, he gets found first. Miracle moves in with a DD active, they'll get the kill. Well, he's not going to be there to save anyone now, Liz. Yeah, he got a lot of stacks out of that, and he's going to get more. Oh, he jumps inside, he's down. No! CC and C's dead! The BKB Miracle with a triple kill! He's gonna 1v5 with this ray. The actual comes out, looking at MSS. The blade mail's there, but Miracle doesn't give a damn. He's gonna move in, trying to finish off the kill. He may went too far, but the Hex comes out, he gets one. He's gonna get a rampage! A miracle! <laughs> Have mercy on their souls, and they'll find mercy and in the form of a GG. GG. Right there. What did they do to you, OD? What did they do? And already in OG, Miracle was considered a great player, maybe one of the greatest, one of the best of the time. And first of all, it was due to his versatility and style of play. Miracle could easily play both mid and carry, and he showed phenomenal play in both roles. At the same time, his unreal personal skills stood out from the rest. Some of Miracle's moments still look fabulous to this day. Moreover, his style of play cannot be replicated by the best players in the world even today. Also, we should not forget about the mental component. Miracle never rages and doesn't get frustrated and anything like that. He's a very calm and reasonable player. At least he seems so. In case of a defeat, he always looks for his own mistakes, which he then works on. And he likes to laugh and have fun between matches. That's basically a description of a perfect player. And that's the player that went to Team Liquid. And there he finally reached the peak of his potential. He showed just how how good he was, unreachable. However, things were not so good for the team at the start. As soon as Miracle joined, they failed to make it to the Major in Boston. Team Liquid decided to make another change and GH joined the lineup. And he was also one of the reasons that at the beginning of 2017, Team Liquid returned to the top again. And together with Miracle, they won almost all the huge tournaments of the year. All these Team Liquid's achievements were cemented by Miracle's victory at TI. Seven, where they were able to defeat Newbie in the finals with a score of 3-0. Still, many will say that this was the most boring TI, especially the Grand Finals, which was pretty one-sided. But it was impossible not to mention it and not to get nostalgic for the International 2017. The team's path on TI wasn't the easiest. Liquid showed themselves very well in the group stage. They won it with a score of 5-3-0, which ensured their passage to the upper bracket. And it all seemed like an easy and quick way to get through to the grand finals. But in their first match, they faced IG, who knocked them down into the lower bracket. And after that, Liquid were just like in a little bit of a trouble, because there would be no second chance. Especially since the teams like EG and LGD also dropped into the lower lower bracket. Moreover, Sacred and OG were already waiting for them there. In the first match of the lower bracket, Liquid faced Team Secret, and Puppy's team made it really easy on the first map in just 25 minutes. But Team Liquid came back in style and closed out two in easy 35-minute games. Of course, with a huge impact from Miracle, who played mid on the second map, and on the decider he already moved to carry, which seemed to surprise Team Secret. After Puppy's team, Team Liquid could face Team Empire and it was probably the easiest match of the whole tournament. 2-0 for Liquid and they proceed. Virtus Pro were already waiting for them, one of the longest maps in the history of the internationals and it was played against VP, the extravaganza of fights, buybacks and more fights which lasted for 103 minutes. Many will call this map the most beautiful map of all the time at TI-17 and they will be right, just look at the gorgeous play from both teams. After 
over such a stunning map, Liquid struggled on the second one and lost it in 36 minutes. Realizing that they couldn't relax, they rallied and won the third map and even 16 frags from no one on Queen of Pain didn't help Virtus Pro. The Bears were eliminated and Liquid fought their way to the semi-finals of the lower bracket, where they met LGD. But the Chinese stars had absolutely nothing to show against a charged miracle. An easy 2-0. And here they are in the lower bracket finals against LGD Forever Young. This game wasn't an easy ride anymore, especially the first map. It was also quite long and hard and lasted for 57 minutes. Liquid gave up the first one, but traditionally they gathered on the last two and went to the grand finals of the International 7. Newbie were waiting for them there, but as I already said, it was probably the most boring final of the International. The first map was over in 27 minutes, the second map lasted a little bit longer, but the third map was memorable for Miracle's phenomenal play on Juggernaut. That BKB to react to Tony was all about Miracle, the virus right from Kaka. It'll connect, follow up vision for KP. He'll get the son of the mass that was in the middle of the field. Darcy coded it off. Miracle, the anchor is left there from GH on the only side. And now it's out for two bits with the side. SCC is gone for two minutes. The list shape was bouncing back down. Kaka trying to hide himself, but right now it's all liquid, liquid, liquid. They have taken down four. He'll get the buyback from the Venom as a GH to the fourth up. He won't even die for this. Liquid lose nothing but take. That was so close. Miracle with 5% HP. Have a look at that moment once more. So, so he Miracle. Wants this DD. He does. Instant stun, blink away, connect again. Now they're going to shackle in a moment. So here are the shackles. Miracle's dropping so low. There's the Echo Manta. Oh, Omni. Just barely getting bailed out by GH. And with that double damage upgrade, it's too much in here. This moment with the double damage rune is still considered a legend, an iconic highlight, and many say that it was because of this that Liquid won the TI. After all, after this exact moment, Newbie could only play for three minutes more. Ladies and gentlemen, Team Liquid became the winner of the International 7. Congratulations and all that. And they did it thanks largely to the personal skill of Miracle and his phenomenal reaction. team which everyone thought their play in the group stage was beyond contest they kept fighting this of the international 2017 is team liquid And even after TI, the team continued to show high results at tournaments. They took the 3rd 4th place at ESL1 Hamburg and then at ESL1 Katowice. They also won the Super Major in China and took 4th place at the next TI. By the way, at the International they did very well and won the group stage again. Let's take a closer look. They again went to upper bracket, but they won their first match there, but then lost to PSG LGD. They went to the lower bracket where they they beat Poppy's team. But then they met Evil Geniuses and they were stronger. Yes, on the first map it was a very tight fight, but Sumail and RTZ were just unbeatable. After that the team still played together, but the results got worse. They couldn't even get silverware at tier 2 tournaments and the last serious one for them was the International 2019. Team Liquid didn't play that good in the groups, so they got straight into the lower bracket without playing a single match in the upper bracket. But after that they pretty confidently went through it, losing only one map in total, and it was against the semi-finalists LGD. In the grand finals they faced OG. The first map went into Liquid's favor, where Miracle made the difference basically. But all the next three maps were just lost in a dry run. And the final drop for them was the carry Wisp and the Gyrocopter in the middle lane with Diffusal Blade. And that was all for Miracle in Team Liquid. The second place at the International 2019. Gyrocopter. Tret's Diffusal Gyrocopter.
Level 14 IO is not 15. So you can check it out. the X. He's strong, but we have an Aegis BB. I want to go aggro. I don't know how they can stop us. Really. They can. They, they can. They can. Guys, they're starting to hit high ground though. Yeah. High ground where we have axe. We just need home for this IO. Yeah. We're in Asia. We're in Asia. You want Tommy? You want Tommy? Any help? Any help? Nice. 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 We have a okay, I'm coming. We fight this. IO coming. 15. Level 15 on IO. That spirit hero damage is there now. Hana gonna join the fight finally. There we have it, Miracle's Mana. It's pretty much entirely gone by Thompson's focus. A little for GH is oh, trying to right. can't get out, there's no mana, GH! I can't buy back the recall. No, I'm The Timber, I'm killing Timber, I'm killing Timber. Timber dead, Timber dead, Timber dead, Timber dead. Timber dead. There's the Shackle turn around, they're looking for Jarek. Jarek's backing away, Thompson focusing Miracle. Miracle's still out of mana because of this diffusal. Jarek, Jarek, he's in with the combo, the GA is out. We all will fall though, the magic damage is there for Thompson. Miracle's trying to run. I don't have mana actually. They're fucking me with the mana. Can we fight here? There's no timber, guys. They, just, they can kill the. They're gonna go on you. I'm running TP crew. Nice one, nice one. Do you have a shot? Yeah, yeah, TP. Nice one. They're all gonna die. They're all dying. They're all dying. I'm net. I'm net. Nice one, Nana. Go, what? And after that failure at the international, Kuroki and his teammates decided to leave the org together and start their own project. Thus, a star was born, Team Negma. Perhaps some say that this was the biggest mistake in Miracle's career. The roster remained the same – Miracle, Kuroki, GH, Weeha and Mind Control. At first, it seemed like a very strong team, but in the end, Team Negma, after a couple of years, downgraded to the point where they couldn't even make it out of the second division of the Dota Pro circuit. Throughout Team Nigma's existence and as they became Nigma Galaxy a little later emerging forces with Galaxy Racer, they were unable to achieve any significant results and were overshadowed by other teams. Their only notable victory was at the Bokovel Minor 2020, where Kuroki and Miracle won only $72,000. Yeah, they got to the major, but they dropped from it really fast. And with each year passing, the team showed weaker and weaker results, although the team remained in the first division of DPC. They were unable to qualify for TI-10, for example. Negma managed to defeat all the easy opponents, but lost to OG in the upper bracket. As Miracle used to say, upper bracket is for… well, you know. So they still had one chance left, and luckily they faced a weak opponent, Spider Pex, and then they were able to defeat Liquid. However, in the finals of the lower bracket, they lost to OG, again, failing to qualify for the long-awaited TI. And then, it's hard to imagine that such a strong team dropped to the second division of the DPC. Yeah, sure, then they added Sumail and things improved slightly, so they got to the tier 1 again. However, the qualifiers for TI-11 followed the same script. Miracle and his teammates started in the upper bracket but immediately dropped to the lower bracket against a stack of players called Goon Squad. Easy ride, and they seemed to regain their footing, but they were just next eliminated by Secret as soon as they faced them. Despite all three games being close, Nisha proved to be stronger and Sumail and Miracle couldn't carry their team to victory. In addition, during the We Play Any Major 2021, Miracle faced health problems during the match against Virtus Pro. According to insiders, he had food poisoning of some sort before the game and just couldn't play, resulting in the match being rescheduled. This may have been the beginning of his health issues, which made him take breaks in his competitive play. Yes, and finally, in December 2022, the org announced that Aimer would not be able to play for some time and he would like to take a break from competitive Dota. And you know what, even in Nigma's downfall, Miracle showed at the highest level of Dota and left incredible highlights in the Orc's history. For example, a notable comeback against Alliance on Arc Warden. As if they were baiting it. And it still doesn't go well, so what do you do? Oh, they're gonna go straight to yeah. the force. Yeah. Force everything out of them. Again, Nico Baby with those kills here. Force thrown is exposed. BKB is up on Nico Baby. Jumps to the other side of things and completely ignores Miracle. Miracle gets out the magnetic field, trying to protect this throne, and it's very difficult to get inside of it. So Nico Baby, he's gonna have a hard time with this. Jumps to the other side, but his shield can still see it. The bubble perfectly matches the throne AoE, and they're just wasting all their time. Finally, the magnetic fields are down. They're gonna focus on the throne. They should be able to finish up. 
up and now oh, one more, a little bit more. They're jumping back and forth, trying to finish it off. The stun goes off from the Morphling. They might actually be able to hold this a little bit longer. FNG has four for the second life. He's swinging off the medic, medic field. It's gonna run out eventually, but the Supernova, it explodes on him. Another buyback, Nico baby, he has to go for it. It's all him, all the diebacks. He needs to hold it all down. Okay, Radiance and the Glyph goes down before they even hit tier four categories, so this is not bad. Eat your hand with a little no. extra damage. Northbeard's coming back up, no. but they don't have a way to protect the ancient. They don't have that same kind of muscle. No. This is going to be miracle. Are the boys taking it for Enigma. Oh my god. <laughs> And don't you forget that Miracle also played as the Shopify Rebellion stand-in for ABET at Dream League Season 20, but they didn't make it out of the group stage, unfortunately. Maybe if they did, it would turn his career, but who knows. So what went wrong? Well, basically Miracle's entire career showed us that he's a world-class player, or even better than that. Nobody can rival him, so it's really unlikely that his failures or his skill is the reason or the problem. Miracle is a great example for all the players in Dota, not only because he has ultra-high skill, but also because he's very calm and often takes the game seriously and responsibly. You know, a lot of people talked about Enigma Galaxy's troubles and all that, and I tend to agree with this one topic that they bring up every time. Nigma's lineup wasn't just ready to adapt to patches. It seemed like they didn't have the time, or they didn't want to. And there's also another reason. As we know, after the failure at ESL1 Birmingham, the team decided to kick Matumba Man a month before the roster lock before TI9. They invited Weeha to Liquid's mid position, and Miracle moved to the carry role. And you know that after finishing at TI9, they formed Team Nigma with the full roster and all that. But how did it all go so wrong? In my opinion, it was because they always played around Miracle, even when he was in the mid lane. So there was no space left for the carry. Perhaps the problem was not Matumba Man, but how Liquid structured their game. Inviting ILTW to their lineup, the team could not achieve any success. And the player himself showed that legendary 016 Medusa performance. Even Mind Control didn't perform as strongly as he could, and he did before. The problem with Miracle's failures was not bad luck, but the fact that Kuro couldn't find the right meta play style for his team and often recruited veterans such as Fata or Mind Control. Some people tend to think that after bringing back Smail and Miracle to Enigma and the weaker Link for some reason being their offlaner and it's good that he's taking a break, everything can be resolved. But I think that it's impossible to answer this question. It is still unclear who will be the position 3 and position 4 in their team and Kuro is still the position 5. I mean, if you're a fan of Enigma, don't you ever open Reddit and read what people think about Kuro and his play as hard support. And our main hero, Miracle, himself is actively playing pups at the moment and he has a good win rate, so if they stack well with uh, Sumail and their new offlaner, things can get better. Maybe they can even become the greatest Dota 2 team, but who knows. I just hope that Miracle can bring us some more highlights and high level of play. And I really, sincerely hope that 2024 can become the year of Team Nigma Galaxy. Guys, that's all. Thank you very much for watching. Please write in the comments below what you think of this format. Whose story would you like to see next? Don't forget to support this video with a like and a follow. I'm not saying goodbye for a long time. This was Dota News. See you soon.